afternoon, everyone, and to those who are viewing online. Welcome to the Lilliput District of Churches Consecration and Induction Service for the newly appointed and elected officers for 2023. We welcome especially our leaders from our five churches that make up this pastoral district. Now the churches are Palmyra, Barrett Town, Ocean Heights, Power of Love, and Lilliput. We also want to welcome the members who are worshiping in the physical space from the five churches and those who are viewing online. To those who have joined to give support, we say it's a blessing to have you here. Now, on behalf of the leadership of this district, we want to say a profound thank you to our online viewers because you have helped us to reach 1,300 subscribers. Now, digital evangelism is the new normal, and we have to embrace this reality because of this, many souls have been won to the fall of God. This afternoon, our leaders and officers will be inducted and consecrated under the theme, Strength for the Journey, Leadership to the Next Level. Welcome everyone, and I do hope that you will be blessed by this afternoon's proceedings. Be blessed as the Palmyra priest team lead us into song service. However, before they do so, I invite those of you who are in the congregation to stand and those viewing online to assume an attitude of reverence while I pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thee thanks for your Sabbath. We give thee thanks that thou hast allowed us to be fed this morning with the spiritual food. And we're here this time for the induction and the consecration service for the officers for 2023. We ask, dear Jesus, that as the praise team leads in the singing of some lovely songs, that hearts will be blessed. We ask that thou will tune their voices so that we will all receive a blessing. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Praise team, please take over. Fire, 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 fire fall on me. Fire, 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 fire fall on me. On the day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. On the day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. Fire, fire, fire. Nobody 
girl, that all of us are here today because we desire to be here. We desire to be in the presence of the Lord. And that's one of the reasons why we're here. And we look forward to be even in the direct, direct presence of God on that blessed day. So, let us take a song. This song might be able to express by <laughs> vocally what we mean. Go ahead. This is my desire to
Amen. Good afternoon, God's children. It is good for us to be back for the next leg of this very, very important day's service. It is the officer's induction service. And I want to take this grand opportunity to welcome each and every one of you back to this service. Uh, those from Palmyra, let me see your hands. Yes, Palmyra is here. Welcome back. Baritone. Yes, they are here. Uh, welcome back. Oceanites. Uh, yes. I, uh, I welcome you back to the afternoon session. Then we go over to Power of Love. Amen. They are here in uh, numbers. And the Lilliputians, let me see your hands. Yes, they are here. So I welcome you back to this afternoon's session. I trust and hope that we have come uh, with uh, our hearts prepared and ready to uh, rededicate ourselves to the Lord to be inducted into service. And I trust that as we uh, go through this program, we will seek to uh, be even more committed to the cause of God than before. So welcome once, welcome twice, welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. So as we continue with our program, I'm going to ask you to return to hymn number 318, and we're going to sing together, uh, Whiter Than Snow, that is hymn number 318. Please stand, everyone, as we sing together. Lord Jesus, I long to be perfectly whole. I want thee forever to live in my soul, hymn number 318.
Let us bow it together for prayer. Oh, great God and our Father who art in heaven, at a time like this, we, your children, bow before you in this your place of worship, requesting your presence with us this afternoon. We are here for one purpose, to dedicate ourselves to thee in order for you to consecrate us and make us worthy to take your message of salvation to the rest of the world. We are asking of you to be with us this afternoon. We are asking of you to show us with your Holy Spirit. Help us that we will find a new sense and a new zeal to take your message to the rest of the world. Bless each officer who have taken up the challenge to work for you during this year 2023. Help us, Lord, that as we work for you, that we ourselves will be prepared so that when our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ the righteous come, we all will be taken up together to meet our Lord in the air and forever to be with you in the earth made new. So come quick, Lord Jesus. We thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. A lot of books and conferences on church growth fall into the how to build a wave category. They try to manufacture the wave of God's spirit using gimmicks, programs, or marketing techniques to create growth. But growth cannot be produced by man. Only God makes the church grow. Only God can breathe a new life into a valley of dry bones. Only God can give us the strength of revival, strength for growth, and strength to achieve spiritual receptivity and consecration. As pointed out about the church at Corinth, Paul planted. Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. Notice the partnership here. Paul and Apollos did their part, but God caused the growth. The sovereignty of God is the factor overlooked in almost all current church growth literature. Pastoring a church, friends, especially in the 21st century and in a post-pandemic era, is not easy. But God always knows who to call at the appointed time for this job. In this pastoral district, we have a leader in whom God has anointed with his Holy Spirit to guide our district to the next level in the person of Pastor Yuzel Parks. Pastor Yuzel Parks will come momentarily and give us his pastoral remarks, which is preceded by an anthem of praise from the Barrett Town Men's Chorale. Be blessed as the men sing for us. Hey, the things that I call the treasures Take my castles in the sand Take my shallow store of knowledge And the future I want Train. 
What do you say? It was John Piper who once said that spiritual leadership is knowing where God wants people to be and taking the initiative to get them there by God's means in reliance on God's power. And through the providence of God, we were able to ride the dark clouds of despair, discouragement, and despondency of the uphill battles that we faced in the year 2022. But here we have come as a people, as a church, as a district, in joining hands and hearts together in the mission for Jesus Christ. This afternoon, brothers and sisters, it gives me great pleasure once again to join with Elder Raymond Bernard to welcome each and every one of us, especially all our new officers, who have been elected by the various churches to serve for that church for the year 2023. As a district, we would have concluded all the elections and all bodies are now in line to continue serving for the year 2023. The year ahead of us will be faced with a number of challenges. It will come with some roadblocks along the way. But as officers of God's church, we should not in any way be daunted by that which will come. We serve a God who has carried us through even the pandemic when we thought that we would not get back into physical church. But here we are this afternoon, gathered together to worship God and to say, God, we thank you for that which you have been doing in our lives. 
Brothers and sisters, it is not always easy to be a leader, especially in this time. It takes great strength and great courage and great support. But I'm very thankful to God for the leaders that he has enabled me to have to work alongside so that the mission here in this pastoral district can be accomplished. We'll say more about them in a little later from now. But for those who might not know, for Lilliput, I, we have rather Elder Raymond Bernard, who has been elected as the first elder. Put your hands together for him. And for those who might not know who Elder Bernard is, I invite Elder Bernard just to stand and be recognized. Next to Elder Bernard, we have Elder Norman Morgan, who has been elected to serve as the first elder at the Power of Love Seventh-day Adventist Church. <laughs> Following Elder Morgan, we have Elder Clinton Bernard, the first elder of Barrytown Seventh-day Adventist Church. <laughs> Following Elder Clinton Bernard, we have Elder Jerome Thompson, first elder at Palmyra. And following Elder Jerome Thompson, with the newest organized church in the district, we have Elder Colin Wright, first elder at Ocean Heights. We have to give God thanks to all those other elders and officers who we'll mention a little later from now. But along with all church officers, these are the persons who ensure the work is done in their various churches. Brothers and sisters, I invite all of us to join together in unity, join together in harmony as we support the mission and take this Lilliput district to the next level. We have said it time and time again that we are not a district that will be left behind. We are, dis we are a district that is on the move and we are moving forward with the power of Almighty God. Last year in December, your pastor was asked to be at the pastoral evangelism and leadership conference that was held at the Oakwood University and out of 54 pastoral districts in the West Jamaica Conference, Lilliput District was presented and represented on the world platform. We are on the move and we continue on the move. And I can tell you, brethren, and I say this without an apology, that we have some of the best leaders across the Jamaica Union Conference that can be found in the Lilliput District of Churches. When we, talk, when we talk about commitment, when we talk about dedication, when we talk about sacrifice, when we talk about infrastructural development, when we talk about education, when we talk about church building, we have the right persons in this district, in all the churches, who can and will continue to assist with the mission forward. What we accomplished in 2022, we did not accomplish it all by ourselves. All of us worked with the mission and for that, I invite you to give yourself a round of applause. And so we are on the move. We are on the move, as you know, that Oceanites, uh, for those who have been there recently, we have just recently uh, partially completed a new pastor's vestry and a brand new first-class bathroom. 
And if you think that Lilliput's vestry is looking good, you need to come at Ocean Heights. And we can talk something else. And I want you to put your hands together for people like Elder Walters and Elder Holder and Elder Wright and um, Elder Lynch. All who have contributed to that Lilliput district is on the move. We can talk about Barrytown. If you go to Barrytown Church, you see a freshly a painted building. And you know, we have, we, have, we have a first elder at Barrytown. Sometimes I wonder, let me not say that part of it. But, but Elder Bernard has an intrinsic motivation, desire to see God's church move forward. And I believe that he is doing a fantastic job there, even as he seeks now to lay hands on some young, young leaders in passing on the baton to them. Commendations to Elder uh, Bernard, and we have completed, or should almost complete, the fencing there by now. We go over to Palmaro. We have uh, completed the perimeter fencing. And at our last board meeting, uh, in December, Elder Ramna Ryan, if you can remind me, uh, we voted to put on two new gates on the church, one at the front and one at the back. And not just that, but we will, in very short order, uh, seek to extend the church to one more wing that will be able to cater uh, for the number of persons who now worship at the Palmyra Seventh-day Adventist Church. If you don't know, let me tell you that maybe very soon from now, Palmyra will be the hub of church within the district. And this is not uh, just me having a preference of Palmyra. But if you know about recent developments across Ryan Park, across Edmund Ridge, and across all of the, uh, the infrastructural housing developments, we will have Palmyra era Cornwall, Ryan Park, and all those persons will be redirected to the Palmyra Seventh-day Adventist Church. So we are trying our very best to expand our building. Uh, some years ago, we never had that vision. But light has come. And we are moving forward together with that. We go over to Lilliput. Lilliput is also on the move. And we took a vote at our last members meeting that uh, you might be seeing now where the church is now open and uh, we, we, we are seeing how we can make our church fit to the kind of society that we are in. And so we are in a modernized kind of society and we want our church to be modernized. I want, brethren, for those who are looking on and see the handiwork behind me, it could not be accomplished by the pastor alone. We talk about persons like Elder Raymond Bernard, persons like uh, Elder Paul Heath, persons like Sister Maria Wallace, persons like Sister Petrina Hall, and all the team who have ensured that we have this wonderful uh, backdrop, not just for today's program, but to continue uh, throughout the year. Not just that, we have removed uh, some of the rail, and uh, we will, in short order, we are still preparing uh, the quotations and the estimates because very soon from now, maybe your next district program at Lilliput Church will be a church that will be fully air-conditioned because we have already taken the vote to air-condition the entire building here at Lilliput. Put your hands together because we are on the move. And I spoke this morning about the school at the back. We have a school on the mission. Elder, well, Sister Brown, the principal and myself sat this week in the meeting at the Ministry of Education. And we look how we can move forward. And this coming week, we believe by God's grace that this school will be fully certified under the Ministry of Education in continuing to provide education and not just for this life, but for the life to come. Put your hands together for the school because the school is doing so well that we now have to be turning back students from being registered. Lilliput District is on the move. 
And I specifically uh, left Power of Love for last. Not because maybe the next uh, district program will be held there. But for those persons who have visited Power of Love, we are doing the best we can. And I want to thank all those persons who have supported uh, that particular harvest for church building. We are seeking even by mid-year. We tried to accomplish it last year. It never came through. But we are seeking even by mid-year to at least finish the first phase of the new building at Power of Love. For those of us who know, we are now worship in a building that uh, was bought some years ago. It was originally a house, but we will be seeking to demolish that house and we are in the process of erecting a new building. And can I tell you that the design for that building will not will see probably that church maybe be the only church in Jamaica with that kind of design. It is a first class world church kind of design and we anticipate what that will be upon its completion. So when we talk about Lilliput District, don't be left in the dark. We are doing the master's business. Not to mention all that I've mentioned. We can talk about the hundreds and number of persons who continue to give their lives to Jesus Christ. My brothers and my sisters, let's continue to work for the master. Let's continue to pray for each other. Sometimes I understand that you may not see how the pastor sees the situation. You may not see how the elders see, but we are on one team. And the team that we are on, we are on that team to do the mission of God. But I pause this evening to solicit your prayers. We have one of our own brothers. You know him as Trevor Scarlett. Trevor is not in the best of health at this time. And I'm impressed to invite the deacons who are here, if you can find some receptacles. Uh, it is and could be possible. And we're still awaiting that final uh, diagnosis to be done. But based on preliminary reports, it could be seen that Trevor has stage 3 bone cancer. At this time, he is unable to walk. We as a church here at Lilliput, we have rendered our contributions and still continue to do so. But as a district, if you are able to walk with something extra in your pocket that you can give toward the aggressive treatment that will be needed to help with that particular situation, then I ask you to give generously toward this cause. We are our brother's keeper. And sometimes we are not the ones who cause sickness to be upon us. But it comes. But what we can do in the situation is to assist our brother to make it through. And so I'm going to invite, if the deacons are standing by, to come at this time to collect an offering, a love offering that will go to offset some of the medical expenses for Brother Trevor Scarlett. We believe in the power of prayer. We believe that God can move mountain. And I'm going to invite Elder Clinton Bernard to join me here. And just before the offering is being collected, we're going to pray a very special prayer for him and for all those who might be having a similar challenge we are a family we are together in this and if we can help a brother make it through then we are doing the best that the master would have done for us I invite us to tune to the hymn reach out and touch the Lord at this time we're going to sing that song together. And after which, I'll ask Elder Clinton Bernard to pray this special prayer for Brother Trevor Scarlett. 
and uh, all other persons who might be affected at this time with a particular health condition. And right after the prayer, we invite the deacons to collect that offering that will go toward the aggressive treatment of our brother and our friend. God and our Heavenly Father we know no other God but you you are the mighty God creator of heaven and earth the one through whom we live and move and have our being we believe Genesis 1 and verse 1 that in the beginning you is God you transform this world from without form and void into paradise. We believe, Lord, that you formed man from the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the bread of life, and he became a living soul. We believe, Lord, that you are the one that formed us in our mother's womb. Yes. And so, Lord, you stand at the head of the medical field. You understand every operation of the human body. What you have done in time past, you are able to do right now. For you are the God who was, the God who is, and the God who is to come. Yes. And so, Lord, by faith, we lift our brother, Brother Scarlett, to the throne of grace, where you have promised that we will find grace to help in time of need. Now, oh God, is a time of need. And you are a present help in time of trouble. Great God, look down upon him with love. We pray, Lord, you may surround him with your arms of love. Let him know that he is not alone. And Lord, as we unite in prayer this afternoon, as we press his, his case to the throne of grace, we are thankful, Lord, we don't have to beg. We don't have to plead because you first love us. You love us, Lord, with an everlasting love. And so, Almighty God, we pray you may touch the blood, touch the bone, touch the tissue, touch every fiber of his being, from his head, Lord, to his feet. So, Lord, whichever way you choose to work, your will be done. So maybe, Lord, you want to work through the medication, your will be done. But maybe, Lord, you want to speak a word for a sign and for wonder that we may know that the days of miracles are not over, that you are still a miracle working God, that you have the power that, Lord, at the name of Jesus, sickness and diseases are still healed. So, God, we put our brother in your hands and we leave him in your hands and we thank you lord for what you're about to do so hear now my prayer lord do far beyond what i'm able to ask or think and almighty god when time changes for eternity and you shall come in your glory we are praying almighty god and brother scarlet indeed our pastor and all the brothers and sisters who are here my dear wife and i and all your believing people may we be saved in your kingdom this we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Elder Bernard. You may be seated. So we invite the deacons and the deaconesses to come at this time to collect that special offering that will go to the offsetting of some of the medical bills of Brother Scarlet. And whilst the offering is being collected, 
we have Sister Latonia Williams from the Barrage Town Church that will give us a special musical item. persons who are joining us online 
and you want to give a contribution toward Brother Scarlett's health challenge, you will see momentarily a give icon on your screen. The banking information is there. We're asking you to please take note of that. And you can give toward his medical needs and send us a message so that we can know how to uh, allocate the funds. This afternoon, members of the Lilliput District of Churches, we can never be tired of hearing from God. And we were charged and fired up this morning with Pastor Stephen Drummond. And oh, what a powerful word that was. I was blessed. I was tremendously blessed. This evening for our consecration service, we have one Pastor Duane Roberts. Pastor Duane Roberts is married to Karan Jean the former war, and the union thus far has produced one girl. I, 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 I ask him if he has gone five, and I just remember that I could not ask the big man that question when I am still at nil. So when I go one, I'll ask him the question, do you agree with me? All right. I know you're praying some prayers there. But it's truly a great pleasure to have Pastor Duane Roberts with us this afternoon. Pastor Roberts has a personal mantra. And I quote, I don't only want to preach a sermon. I want to be a sermon. But if I don't practice what I preach, it's only going to be a speech. Pastor Roberts serves as the district pastor for the Seaford Town District of Churches. One who is my good friend and colleague in ministry. It is my joy then this afternoon to present to you, Lilliput District members, Pastor Duane Roberts, who will come momentarily with the word from God. I invite for him from you this afternoon to pray for him that God will place that special word for all of us as we are charged and be equipped for the ministry and the service that is ahead. Just before he comes, the Lilliput SDA Church will give us the song of meditation. shiver in the cold but I did say you never walk through this world alone and I did say don't make this world your home I never said that fear wouldn't find you in the night Loneliness was something you'd never have to fight But I did say I'd be right there by your side 
and I did say, I'll always help you find. You know I made a promise that I intend to keep. My grace will be sufficient in every time of peace. My love will be the anchor that you can hold on to. church again say amen let you know that that song done by the Lilliput praise team is one of my favorite pastor parks i am still in studio in the bathroom and when i touch stage i'll be able to deliver like them one of my favorite one of my favorite Thank you so very much, praise team, for reminding us that this is the promise. We have great promises in the word of God. John chapter 14 is a promise. If I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. It's a joy, beloved brothers and sisters, to 
be with you. I am seeing some of the family members that I am much more acquainted with scattered across the congregation. And it's a, it's a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. So thank you, Pastor, and the officers who would have seen it fit for me to be here this afternoon. I so also let you know that my wife is here. I'm not sure if she's out the car, but she's here. And uh, that little one. And uh, Pastor, I want to just let you know that if you want to produce, um, there is one sister here that gave me some mix-up once upon a time. Where, where's my sister? Is she in the house? I'm looking. All right. I'll keep it a secret. I'll keep it a secret. I'll keep it a secret. All right. So you can talk with her off here. And then you can be on your way. It's a joy to be with you, beloved. Um, I'm going to get right into the word. I'm going to be focusing on... Exodus chapter 18, a well-known passage of Scripture. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there with me. Exodus chapter 18. I'm going to be looking at just three verses for the time being. Exodus chapter 18. I'll read from verse 13 down to 15. The Bible said, And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood by Moses from morning until the evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did, to the people he said, What is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone and all the people stand by thee from morning unto even? And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of God. I'll pause there for the moment as I look at the subject, Jethro's counsel. Jethro's counsel. I want to invite you to bow your heads as we have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, it is your time to speak. And I pray, O oh God, that you will speak so clearly. Because when you speak, your voice still make the difference. For even now, you will push me so far back that I will pale and fade into insignificance. Then I ask that you will step forward to this pulpit and you will speak directly to your people. Forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Give now the wind a mighty voice, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Jethro's counsel. We are under the, we are guided by the theme, strength for the journey, leadership to the next level. I'll start by letting you know of a story. There is a story on the entrepreneurial circuit of two salesmen from competing companies who were sent to Africa to assess the market for shoes. I'm going to name the shoes brand Nike and Adidas. 
So the salesman from Nike Air scouts around for a few days, exhausted and unexcited. He heads for the telegraph office to contact the company's headquarter. His telegraph states, research completed. Unmitigated disaster. Nobody here wear shoes. Likewise, salesman from Adidas does his research and he heads for the same telegraph office. Exha exhausted but excited, he gleefully wrote, Research completed. Glorious opportunity. Nobody here wears shoes. I hope you get the message. The point, brothers and sisters, is of course that salesman from Adidas is a visionary leader. One who sees opportunity where others see obstacles. A salesman from Nike Air only was looking out but the salesman from adidas had an outlook looking out beloved brothers and sisters is just a watchman perspective while outlook is futuristic is the church with me today as a salesman from nike had he had sight but he lacked insight. Hello, somebody. He could see, but he had no vision. Hello, somebody. Adidas salesman, he had sight, insight, and a foresight. And as a leader, your perspective of your department in the church, you must have a vision for it. I want to counsel you that if you lack vision, you will need supervision. Can I say that one more time, Pastor? If, if you lack vision, you will need supervision because we are told in Proverbs 29 verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Now the story we have just looked at in Exodus is a perfect model of how the church is structured. From the general conference to the local congregation, we, we operate through delegation. The mission of the church could not be carried out by Pastor Parks only. Hello, somebody. All of us are a part of this mission. And this service today is just a reenactment of Moses' delegation and consecration service. Uh, hear me, noble officers of the Lilliput district. Like Moses, even if you had a bush burning, a shoe removing encounter with God, you will, you still don't know it all and you need the guidance from others. Moses, he was too deep in his leadership strategy so he could not see that he was burning and he soon would burn out. Jethro realized that Moses was operating like the star. And Jethro, as the observer, recognized that he will soon become the ex-news in the Israelite gleaner. So he pulled him aside and gave him some counsel. Jethro made it clear to Moses that it is not about you, Moses. It is about the work of God. And for the work of God to go forward, you must include others. So he said you must build a cadre of team members who will share your vision. Jethro suggests that 
Moses should mentor leaders who can share in the responsibility of leading. In fact, he suggests that the team must not only help Moses, but the team should also mentors, mentor others to become leaders. Jethro understands uh, the importance of developing a, a leadership team and he knows the best way to do this is to consecrate and, and to create a leadership pipeline, a process of being mentored and, and mentoring at the same time. Building a strong team not only helps to address the current needs but it also sets the stage for a strong future. What can we learn from Jethro's and Moses' experience? Leaders, officers, want to let you know that as a leader, as an officer, you must have a teachable character. Moses was the one who was called consecrated and commissioned by God. He could have refused Jethro's counsel and let him know that he has been doing this for years and he know what he is doing. But Moses was tender and teachable. He welcomed Jethro's counsel gladly. And lesson number one that we can learn is that leaders should be willing to be led and they must have a teachable spirit. Verse number 24 of the text said, So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. Lesson number two, beloved brothers and sisters, officers should have a character and a lifestyle worthy of emulation and they must be God-focused, God-conscious, and God-fearing. Verses 21 and 22 says, Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people Able men such as fear God. Men of truth. Hating covetousness. And place such over them to be rulers of thousands. And rulers of hundreds. Rulers of fifties. And rulers of ten. All these officers, they were delegated according to their ability. So if you are put in charge of a group of 10, don't fuss yourself. You're not ready for 100 yet. You've got to step up the ranks. And God will give us talent according to our several abilities. Verses 22 implies that the officers are burden bearers. They are burden bearers with the pastor. Hello, somebody. After the work is delegated, it is said, So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. If things aren't going well, hear me, beloved. If things aren't going well in the church, officers should not be whipping the pastor or other officers, but they should be working together for a resolution. Can I say that again? If things aren't going well in the church, you should not be what's up in another member to talk, oh, the pastor is not doing this. But the church should be working together for a resolution so the mission can go forward. Hear me, beloved. I am a part of a church where sometimes some people are hard to get along with. It says people won't go along with you 
if you can't, if they can't get along with you. Let me say that again. Let me say it again. You missed it. People won't go along with you if they can't get along with you. We have to have good people skills. We, we should be approachable. Hello, somebody? We should not be arrogant and behave as if I know it all. We have to listen even to the youngest child in the church because they could just be giving us an insight from God. Hear me now. So while you are a leader, you must be honest in your dealings. Most of you teachers, you work in other places. You must always maintain honesty. Because your behavior outside of the church affects what happens inside the church. So you've got to ensure that your dealings are, are, are in order. You must be kind with your words to other members. Uh, James said we have a little member and some of us can't control that member. You have got to learn to control that little member called the tongue. Before you speak, you should think about what he said. The Bible said, soft answer, turn it away, wrath, but grievous words. Stir up anger. And I know that there are some officers, they are not in the best of relationship now because of some other officer's behavior. You call meeting and they show up anytime they want to show up and stall the program, hurt you to your heart, but you have Jesus, you just have to contain yourself and said, it is not about me, this is about Jesus. So you, 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 before you say anything, my, my wife told me that one of the best methods that I practice, silence cannot be quoted. So before somebody quotes you, like Jesus, who was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, yet he opened not his mouth, you just Soft answer still turns away wrath. Yes, sir. Grievous words will stir up anger. So if we are going to the next level with, with our leadership, our mindset will have to be transformed. We, we can't expect next level leadership and still have an old mindset. Hello somebody. The Bible tells us in Philippians 2 and verse 5, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Romans also tells us, and be not conformed to this world, but be he transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I'm happy that renewing is in the present continuous tense. Yes, Our mind should always be renewing. Ideas you tried last year, you can revisit. I know somebody, you can try and try and try again. If at first uh, you did not succeed, but try again. Now we may be able to find out what is the good an accepted and perfect will of God. Brothers and sisters, you may get discouraged when community and committee members are missing in action. But can I counsel you like Jethro? Just wait upon the Lord. If you wait upon the Lord, you will have strength for your labor. 
the songwriter said strength for your labor the Lord will provide again I say unto you wait upon the Lord because Isaiah said they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as an eagle they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint hello somebody there is work for you to do but you've got to wait upon the Lord. The songwriter asks the question when we talk about leadership. Like Isaiah, the question comes to us, who will go for us? While the souls of men are dying and the master calls for you, let not one officer in the Lilliput district say, I have nothing to do, but gladly take the task he gives you. Let his work your pleasure be. Answer quickly when he calleth, here am I. Oh Lord, send me. Are you ready to take it to the next level, beloved? To take it to the next level, the mind must be transformed. The attitude must change. The, our people skills must improve. Because when, when Jesus was walking about and the parents couldn't find him, Jesus had to remind his parents that he's about his father's business. Hello somebody. If you are running a business and you are not doing a good job, the business is going to run down. And this is God's business and we have got to ensure that we take care of God's business. And when we take care of God's business, God will take care of our business. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, heed the counsel from Jethro, be willing to be led. Because if you are a leader and you're not willing to be led, you're not a good follower. Hear ye the word of the Lord today. As we take ministry and leadership to the next level. If I can help somebody. As I go along, then my living will not be in vain. I invite you to stand as we have a word of prayer and get the business rolling on. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, you could have used angels who Paul said are God's ministering spirits. You have seraphims who are powered by six wings. They can cover miles that we, we can't imagine to cover. But yet still you chose us to be co-laborers with you. I pray, O oh God, that you will bathe us in your love. And when we would have been soaked into your love, the only thing that we will say like Isaiah, even though I dwell where people have unclean lips, I will go. Because I want to rescue the perishing. Care for the dying. Snatch them in pity from sin on the grave. Weep with the erring one. Lift up the fallen and point them to Jesus, who is mighty to save. Pray that your blessings will be upon every single one of us. In Jesus' matchless and miraculous name we pray. Amen. And amen. We thank Pastor Roberts for 
those reminders as we continue with our induction service. Our job as church leaders is to recognize a wave of God's spirit and to ride it. It is not our responsibility to make waves, but to recognize how God is working in the world and join him in this endeavor. Watching surfers from the shore makes catching waves look pretty easy. Actually, it is quite difficult and it requires great skill and balance. Catching a spiritual wave of growth is not easy either. It takes more than desire or even dedication. It takes insight, patience, faith, skill, and most of all, it takes balance. Today, God is creating wave after wave of people receptive to the gospel. Due to a, due to a plethora of problems in our world, more people seem to be open to the good news of Christ than any other time in this century. As we have been charged by our guest speaker, may the fire in our spiritual lives be rekindled so that more than ever, God can use us mightily in his vineyard. We invite once again Pastor Yusel Parks to lead us in this induction service. Thank you very much, Madam Host. Thank you, Pastor Roberts, for that powerful charge. And uh, you were quite timely. There is a word that says that if you are short, not in stature, but in the word, counsel. And we will, at this time, we have reached the part of our program where we'll be having the induction and the consecration uh, part of the program. And so we ask you to bear with us as we go through this aspect of the program. This afternoon, we have come at such a time as this where God has called his people to lead his church as we seek strength for the journey, understanding that it is a call to the next level. Today, I present to the membership at Lilliput, Elder Raymond Bernard, who has been elected to serve as first elder for the year 2023. At this time, I invite Elder Raymond Bernard to please stand and approach the lectern on my right or his left. In making the core of church administration, we invite our treasurer, Sister Karen Christy Harris, and our church clerk, Sister Olga Bernard, to please stand and approach the platform. I also wish to acknowledge all the other elders who have been elected to serve on the elders board for the year 2023. And no two persons are in absentia today. Two persons are in absentia today, Elder Melva Spence and Elder Colin Walters. And so I ask Elder Mark Nemard to stand and join the team on the platform. It 
it is to this end I congratulate you all and pray that God will grant you the courage, strength, and boldness and the leadership qualities as you effect change in your church and mobilize the members for growth. Pastor Husel Parks, on behalf of the newly elected board, elected elders board, I thank you for the confidence you have placed in us uh, through the decision of the nominating committee and we pledge by the grace of God that we will faithfully effect our responsibilities and bring about a change in our areas of calling. I therefore present to you the following persons who have been elected to serve the church board for the year 2023. I kindly ask all board members of the Lilliput Seventh Adventist Church to stand and be recognized. All the board members of the Lilliput Church. I also invite all of the all of our officers who are not board members to stand and be recognized. So you're an officer, not a board member. You're asked to stand, please. Once you're a church officer, uh, please stand. Maybe a Sabbath school teacher, a teacher of the division. Once you are an officer, uh, please stand and be recognized. Amen. Thank you. Remain standing. Today, on the authority of the word of God and as fast of this district of churches, I congratulate all of you on your successful election and or appointment. May the spirit of God empower all of you as you offer yourselves available to be used in the service of God. You are now fully inducted in your areas of assignment with all rights and responsibilities of the said office. May God rest his blessings upon you and I invite the church at large to put your hands together for the officers of the Lilliput Seventh-day Adventist Church. You may be seated. As we seek for strength for the journey, understanding it's a call to the next level, I present to the church at Barrett Town, Elder Clinton Bernard, who once again has been elected to serve that church as the first elder for the year 2023. I invite Elder Bernard, who is already standing, to approach the lectern on my right. And in making the core of church administration, we invite our treasurer, Elder Elvis Farkison, and our church clerk, Mrs. Margaret Howard Farkison, to please stand and approach the platform. I also wish to acknowledge all the other elders who have been elected to serve on the Elders Board for 2023. As your name is called, please stand and approach the platform. Elder Byron Anglin. Elder Byron Anglin. And Elder Portia Road who is in absentia, but is watching virtually. It is my prayer 
that God will grant you the courage, the strength, the boldness and leadership qualities as you effect change in the church and mobilize the other members for growth. Pastor Parks, on behalf of the newly elected Elders Board, I thank you for the confidence you have placed in us through the decisions of the nominating committee. And we pledge by the grace of God that we will faithfully effect our responsibilities and bring about a change in our area of calling. I therefore present to you the following persons who have been elected to serve the church board for the year 2023. I kindly ask all board members of the Barrytown Seven Minutes Church to stand and be recognized. All board members. I also invite all other officers who are not board members to stand and be recognized. All other officers who are here, Sabbath school teacher, whatever your office is, thank you. Thank you very much, Elder Bernard, and remain standing on the authority of the word of God. I wish to congratulate all of you today upon your success, successive uh, election and appointment. We pray that the Spirit of God will empower you as you offer yourselves available to be used in his service. You are now fully inducted into your areas of assignment with all rights and responsibilities of this said office. May the blessings of God be upon you. Let us put our hands together for the officers of the Barrytown Seventh-day Adventist Church. Thank you to the team of elders and leaders. Strength for the journey is not enough without God's leading. And this afternoon, to take the church at power of love to the next level, I present to the church at power of love, Elder Norman Morgan, who has been elected to serve as first elder of the said church. I invite Elder Morgan to stand, who is already standing, and approach the platform. In so making the core of church administration, we invite our treasurer, Sister Paulette Dryden, and our church clerk, Sister Nikisha Mingas, to stand and approach the platform. I also wish to acknowledge all the other elders who have been elected to serve on the elders board for the year 2023. As your name is called, please stand and approach the platform. Elder Desmond Dawkins. Elder Christopher Mingus. Elder Oral Goss. It is my prayer and the prayer of all the membership that God will grant you strength and courage, boldness and the leadership qualities as you effect growth and change and mobilize your members for service. Uh, Pastor, 
Cox, on behalf of the Elders Board, we say thanks to you for accepting the decision of the church nominating committee to select us to serve this church, the Power of Love Church, for the year 2023. We will surely, under God's grace, do the work professionally as God requires us to do. I'm also asking at this time that my fellow board members to please stand from the Power of Love Church, all our board members. Also, I'm going to ask all the other officers who are serving but not sitting on the church board for 2023. Pastor Fox, I present to you the full leadership that will work along with you at the Power of Love Seventh-day Adventist Church. Thank you. Remain standing and on the authority of the word of God. And as the pastor called to lead this district, I congratulate you, Elder Morgan, and your team upon your successful election and or appointment. We pray that the Spirit of God will empower you as you offer yourselves as agents of change to be used in the service of God. You are now fully inducted in your areas of assignment with all rights and responsibilities of the office that you now hold. We pray God's richest blessings upon you and we ask the church at large to put our hands together for the officers of the church at Power of Love. You may be seated. At such a time like this, where God has called his people to lead his church with the understanding is a call to the next level. I present to the church at Palmyra, Elder Jerome Thompson, who has been elected to serve as first elder for that church for the year 2023. At this time, I invite Elder Jerome Thompson to kindly stand and to approach the platform. In making the core of church administration, we invite our treasurer who is in absentia, but if we have the assistant treasurer here, Sister Herfer, or Chinson, you may come. If not, we invite the clerk, Sister Lushon Leslie, to also approach the platform. Right, we are not seeing them this afternoon. And so I ask the following persons who sit on the elders board to kindly stand and approach the platform when your name is mentioned. Elder Delia Ramnarain. Elder Ricardo Spence. Elder Craig Forbes. Elder Nakasa Martin. It is our prayer that God will grant you courage and strength and boldness to effect change in your church and to mobilize the members for service. Pastor Yuzel Parks, on behalf of the newly elected elders board, I thank you for the confidence you have placed in us through the decision of the nominating committee. And we pledge by the grace of God 
that we will faithfully effect our responsibilities and bring about a change in our areas of calling. I therefore present to you the following persons who have been elected to serve the church board for the year 2023. I kindly ask all board members of the Palmyra Seventh-day Adventist Church to please stand and be recognized. I also invite all officers who are not board members to stand and be recognized as well. The Palmyra Seventh-day Adventist Members Board we present them to you, Pastor Parks. Thank you very much. And, you know, some persons might be wondering, once you're not a board member, but your name is on the officer's list, you are an officer. All right. Uh, today, on the authority of the word of God, and as district pastor, I congratulate all of you. I know some persons are not here today. And uh, we wish for you God's richest blessings as you work in his cause. And so you are now fully inducted in the areas of your assignment with all rights and responsibilities. And we pray God's richest blessings upon you and your family. Let's put our hands together for the leadership at Palmyra. Thank you very much. You may return to your seats. And finally, we want to, and you by, you by now might know that Ocean Heights is near to my heart. We have come at such a time like this where God has called his people to lead his church as we seek strength for the journey, leadership to the next level. I present to the church at Ocean Heights. Elder Colin Wright, who has been elected to serve the church for the year 2023. Elder Wright, please approach the platform, the lectern. And uh, in making the core of church administration, we invite our treasurer, Sister Francine Poiser Walters, and uh, our church clerk, who is in absentia today, to please approach the platform. I also wish to acknowledge the other elders who have been elected to serve on the elders board. As your name is called, please stand and approach the platform. Elder Henry Holder. And Elder Doug Walters. It is our prayer, Elder Wright, and the prayers of all of us that God will equip you with the right tools, the right skills, with strength and with boldness as you effect change in your church and to mobilize the members for growth. Pastor Parks, on behalf of the newly elected board, I thank you for the confidence you have placed in us to the decision of the nominating committee and pledge by the grace of God that we will faithfully effect our responsibilities and bring about a change in our area of calling. I therefore present to you the following persons who have been elected to serve the church board for the year 2023. I kindly ask all board members of the Oceanite Seventh-day Adventist Church to stand and be recognized.
I also invite all of the officers who are not board members to stand and be recognized. Thank you very much, Elder Wright, and upon the authority of the Word of God, I congratulate you all on your successful election and our appointment. We pray the Spirit of God to empower you as you offer yourselves available to be used in the service of God. You are now fully inducted into your areas of assignment with all rights and responsibilities. May the blessings of God be upon you. Let us put our hands together for the Oceanites Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now I ask the members to return to their seats but remain standing and all other officers of all the districts, of all the churches, sorry, please stand at this time. All church officers across Lilliput District of Churches, please stand. I invite Pastor Dwayne Roberts to come at this time and to pray that special consecratory prayer that God will help all of us as we be agents of change for him for this time, for this season, and to lead the church to the next level in mission, in ministry, and in mentorship. Thank you very much, Pastor. Then I ask you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, in this day, in the year of our Lord Jesus Christ, we would have set aside this afternoon for this service. I know you are watching from heaven all the actions we would have performed here. I pray in a very special way now, O oh God, that you will send forth angels as your minister in spirit. Like you send Samuel to anoint David. Pray that you will send the, the spirit of God to anoint these officers. If you anoint them, O oh God, I pray that they will remain faithful to the cause, to the mission, ministry, and mentorship. Pray, O no God, that you will touch them from the crown of the head unto the sole of the feet. Like the songwriter, I want to believe they are saying, I have heard thy voice, and I'm responding. So consecrate them now, O oh God, to thy service by the power of love divine. May their souls look up with a steadfast hope and their will be lost in thine. Lord, as they would have taken the vows before this noble congregation, May they now translate that into their full-fledged commitment by their actions. Use them for your honor. Use them for your glory. And Lord, we pray that your blessings will be upon them always. Like the psalmist, your goodness, your mercy will attend them all the days of their lives. I pray that you will give them patience. Pray that you will grant them meekness. I pray that you will fill their hearts with love. Fill their hearts with love for you. And when their hearts are filled with love for you, it will translate in serving our fellow men. Use them, Lord. And I pray that when time and earth would have ended, and you see it fit to come, 
all these noble officers will stand like Isaiah and say, Lord, this is our God that we have waited for, and he shall save us. But until then, let them continue to work for the day is coming when man's work will be o'er. In your divine hand, I leave them now. Pronounce now your blessing upon them. Cause your face to shine upon them and lift up the light of your countenance and give them your peace now and forever, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. We are almost to the ending of the program. We have just a few more items to go. And at this time, we invite Elder Holder and company to bless our hearts with a special musical item. Amen. Once I was bound um, by um, sin and its fetters, chained like a slave, I struggled in vain, but I received that.
can we say thanks for all the things that God has done for us? Things so undeserving. Yet he gave them to prove his love for us. Praise and gratitude are rightly yours, O Lord. And that is why the psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. The privilege is mine this afternoon, this evening, to express sincere gratitude and thanks for all, to all those who have participated in today's program. I start by saying thanks to our gracious Heavenly Father for being with us, for giving us life, and for all the many blessings that he has bestowed upon us. We say thanks to Pastor Stephen Drummonds, our morning guest speaker, for the inspiring word that he brought to us. We want to thank the organizing committee for putting together a great program. I think we should put our hands together for the organizing committee. We want to say thanks to our pastor and his wife for their stewardship and distinct leadership that has caused growth and transformation to our district. A round of applause for our pastor and his wife. We want to thank the board of elders across the district for the leadership that they give in their individual churches. We want to thank our competent, beautiful, and knowledgeable host, Sister Margaret Howard Farkison. <laughs> we want to thank our counselor, Counselor Anter Murray, for accepting the invitation to come and to be a part of today's worship experience. We want to thank all the sweet singers in Israel, the groups and the mass choir for their presentation in songs and music. We want to thank the musicians for the accompaniment that they gave to the different singers. Musicians, give us something. Thank you very much. We want to thank our camera personnel and for the excellent work that they are doing. Thank you very much. For those who uh, took the pictures uh, this morning, for those who are working uh, right now. Thank you very much. I want to thank the system operator. I want to thank all the IT personnel. I want to thank the stage manager. I want to thank all the technicians who got things sorted out so that we could have a, flu a free flow and smooth flow to today's service. We want to thank all our deacons and deaconesses for maintaining order, for giving direction for parking, for assisting in the baptism service. Thank you very much. We want to thank the cooking committee and for the meal that they provided. We want to thank the cleaning and decoration, decorating committee uh, for the fine work that they have done in uh, decorating and um, for all that they did so that uh, the program could also be a success. We want to thank all the brothers and sisters across the five churches. We want to thank all our viewers online. We want to thank all our community members who came out and be a part and supported today's service. Thank you very much. And to all those who have in one way or another uh, work and uh, supported the service, we want to say thank you very much. At this time, I want to invite our devotional speaker for this afternoon, Pastor Dwayne Roberts, to come forward. Uh, Pastor Roberts, I want to thank you very much traveling all the way from your district, leaving the flock, and to come and to give a word, a word that was so timely. And we want to let you know that we listened attentively, and the work of delegation uh, is something that we take to heart, and something that we will put in practice over here in the Lilliput district. Thank you very much. May God bless you, bless your wife, bless the entire family. May you be faithful, and we hope that one day 
you along with us will hear the well done, good and faithful servant. And before I take my seat, I want to give one final thanks. I want to say thanks to my beautiful wife. I thank you for your support, your tower of strength by my side. God knew that I needed you. And of all the women in the world, you are the one that I love. For no one makes me feel the way you do. God bless you. Thank you, my wife. Your husband loves you. Church, we must say thanks to God for being with us thus far. For that reason, since as we need His help continually, we have only fear for us to bow our heads, bow our knees, and give Him thanks for His goodness towards us. Let us pray. Holy Father, we are glad that you are always willing to dwell among your children. Remember your words that you uttered to us before you leave this planet. You tell us that we must go preach, teach. And you make it vividly clear that without you, we can't do nothing. Remember also that you tell us that we shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon us. And so we are beseeching you, Holy Father, since as you have chosen us to proclaim the good news of salvation. Cleanse all of us who are called by your name and fulfill your promise upon us that the work will be accomplished in righteousness. We beg these are mercy we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior and friend. What a wonderful time we have had since morning, since we started our district convocation. We have come to the end of the program. I want to express how grateful I am to Pastor. I want to express how grateful I am to our pastor for leading out in this afternoon's devotion. Now I take three pointers from his presentation. Three pointers from his presentation, and I, I, I entitle it Next Level Characteristics. Number one, we should have a transformed mind. Number two, our attitudes must be changed. And number three, our people skills should be improved. So as leaders, as officers, as we go to the next level, these are some characteristics that we need to embed in our lives and to portray. Now, in my opinion, we live in the most exciting time in the history of the church. Unparalleled opportunities and powerful technologies are available to our congregations. More importantly, we are experiencing an unprecedented movement of God's spirit in many parts of the world today. More people are coming to Christ now than any other time in history. This is a call for resilient and courageous soldiers to keep fighting in God's army. It is then my hope that we will allow God to take us to the next level of 2023 and beyond. Congratulations, fellow officers. The work has just begun. Let us remain faithful until the master returns. Officers, please be reminded that tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning at 9, will be an officers meeting at the Barrett Town Church, and we are all expected to be in attendance. That's tomorrow morning at 9. There will be an officers training at the Barrett Town Church, and we are all expected to be in attendance. Thank you all for staying with us, and to our viewers online, those who have been tuning for morning, thanks for staying, and the persons, our members, our visitors in the 
congregation thanks for staying with us on behalf of the entire leadership and production teams. I am Margaret Harwood Farkasel, wishing for you a wonderful rest of the evening. Our praise team is standing by and they will take us out with the church song. God bless you.
Thank you.